Okay, today we're going to solve equations by using a technique called distributing. We're going to go ahead and skip the warm up and go ahead and fill in these notes. One reason why some people like math is because there's usually more than one correct answer. One reason why they might dislike math is because there's often more than one way to get the correct answer. Knowing as many ways to get the correct answer as possible is a good thing. Sorry, let me zoom out for a second. Knowing all the different or possible ways to rewrite expressions is also a good thing. One property that is used all the time to rewrite expressions is called the distributive property of multiplication. If you're interested in how this works, I can teach you. Um, that's beyond the scope of this video though. More specifically, this is the ability of multiplication to distribute over addition and subtraction. Very few operations have this ability, but distributing and its opposite called factoring is very useful. And you'll learn more about factoring next year. So we're going to solve this equation two ways. The first is one that you technically already know. I taught you that you solve using PEMDAS but backwards. You're gonna undo everything. So the way PEMDAS works with parentheses is that rather than doing the what's inside the parentheses first, we do what's inside the parentheses very last. So that means that the first thing we get rid of is this two right here. That two is multiplying, so we're gonna divide by two on both sides. And I get r minus three equals, okay, nine divided by two. You could just say nine halves, but I'm gonna write this as a mixed number, four and a half, because that's easier for me to do mental math in my head with. Then to undo subtraction, we add three to both sides, and I know that four and a half plus three equals seven and a half. So let's keep track of that answer. We get seven and a half. You can also write this as a, an improper fraction, which is 15 halves. So that's our right answer. I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. Now we can use something called the distributive property of multiplication, which basically means that multiplication can jump parentheses. It has a lovely exception to the rule of the order of operations. If there is addition or subtraction in those parentheses, then you can just multiply times all the things, all the terms inside the parentheses. So I have two times r and two times three. Okay, so two times r is two r, two times three is six. What sign do you think goes in the middle there? If you said the minus sign, you're right. And we have equals nine. Now what's nice about this is I don't have any fractions yet. So now we're going to undo the rest just like I normally do when I solve a two-step equation. Add six to both sides. And then divide by two. And 15 divided by two equals 15 halves or seven and a half. So I got the right answer this way and I didn't have to deal with fractions as quickly. And this way is actually easier if you have a more difficult number to divide by like seven. So generally um, to make life easier for ourselves and have fewer fractions while we're solving the problem, we'll distribute the multiplication first to get rid of the parentheses. Everywhere that there is parentheses and there's a number right outside of it, you're going to distribute and multiply. Then after that, you can combine or collect all the like terms, just like we learned yesterday. I'm going to do example A with you. Oh, this one looks hard. But remember, our first step that we're going to do is we're going to distribute. I'm actually, I want to write down these steps. So first, distribute. Okay, we're going to distribute the number that is immediately outside the parentheses because that's the number that's being multiplied. This five over here is not being multiplied, so we're gonna leave it there for a minute. I'm going to multiply negative three, whoa, negative. Yeah, you gotta include that minus in front. So this is like adding a negative, so now that number is now negative. So negative three times four x is negative 12x and negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 which you can also write as minus 3 so you could write it this way or this way 
I'm just going to keep that minus because I like writing less. Now remember, I told you we had to we had to deal with that 5x later. So let's bring it down. And now we have 5x plus negative 12x or 5x minus 12x minus 3. Draw my line. Okay, so first step is to distribute. And then just like the notes told us, we're going to combine like terms. I like to abbreviate this to CLT, like your new favorite sandwich. Not a BLT, but a CLT. So I'm going to combine my like terms. And I see some like terms. Remember that these like terms always have to be on the same side of the equal sign. So 5x and 12x work. 3 and 18 do not work because they're not on same sides of the equal sign. You can't add things across the equal sign. That doesn't really work. So 5 minus 12 is negative 7x minus 3. Now once you do steps 1 and 2, it gets pretty simple. We're going to, if there's an extra variable term, you get rid of the extra variable. This one, it doesn't have an x on both sides, so we're good. Then you're going to follow PEMDAS and undo addition and subtraction, and then undo multiplication and division. Or you may just say, hey, that's a two-step equation. So I'm just going to undo it the way I always do with my two-step equations. Add 3 to both sides, get 21 equals negative 7x. Now I'll divide by 7, and I get, oh, not 7, negative 7. Guys, I almost made that mistake. Make sure that you divide by the negative number, the whole thing. And we get x equals negative 3. Ta-da! Remember how you check your answer? You plug in negative 3 everywhere there is an x and see if it equals 18. If it does, we did it right. I like to keep this video as short as possible, so I'm just going to show you real quick the first thing you would do on example C. I told you to get rid of parentheses first. What's weird about this one is that there's just a negative sign. Remember that anywhere that there is just a negative sign, there's like a 1 there. So you can multiply negative 1 times both y and negative 10. And that will help you get the first part. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Make sure to check out extra resources if you need more help.